What's up guys, we are here at the Thermal Take Suite, CES 2020, and right behind Mike right now is a really cool case that we're gonna get to, but we gotta start on this side of the room first, work our way around, they got a bunch of new cases, new memory, new RGB control software, that's a very interesting implementation of something that's been a problem in the past. So let's go take a look. BPS Customs coverage of CES 2020 in Las Vegas is made possible by Thermaltake, Fractal Design, and Corsair. Thank you to them for making our trip possible. Check out the links below and show them some love because the last thing I need is for them to join forces into some PC hardware Voltron for the sole purpose of defeating me in single combat. So if you guys have been watching my channel, you may have seen the ads that I've run for Thermaltake's Tough Ram, which is something that I've actually used a couple in a couple of builds. I. It seems to work pretty well. They offer a good range of speeds, and now they're offering them without any RGB effects. So you have white, and you have this black and silver. It looks really good. Uh, I actually almost kind of prefer it without the RGB effects, uh, and it's also gonna be cheaper than the standard Tough Ram with RGB, so that's always a bonus. One of the new cases that Thermaltake is showing off is this one right here. This is the AHT 600, and it comes in both black and white. Should be available sometime around maybe end of February, beginning of March. Pricing on this is going to be $229 or $249, depending on color. So the, the white variant is going to carry a $20 price premium. But if you swing over this way and take a closer look at this, you'll see that it's not your typical case. Obviously, the front is very aggressive styling. It almost kind of looks like a like a cockpit or something like that. With And these are kind of engines or... I don't even really know how to describe this, but the steel on this actually feels pretty thick, and it's a completely open concept, both on the bottom and then up through the sides. The side tempered glass panel is hinged and swings out, and then it gives you easy access to your internals. Should provide you with some pretty good airflow. Also, it is focused on water cooling because it supports 420 or 480 millimeter radiators at both the top and on the side. As you can see right here, they actually have it set up with one of their new distro blocks inside, and it looks pretty cool, but that back plane can actually be used for fan mounting as well. New in Thermaltake's view lineup is the View 51 TG ARGB. Again, both in black and white flavors. It's gonna come with the two 200 millimeter addressable RGB fans in the front on both of them, as well as a 120 at the rear. These are gonna be available soon if they are not already. The launch date was actually on the third. They may or may not be at retailers yet, but you should see them soon. 179 for the black version, 189 for the white version. And same thing with the View 71 that you might be familiar with from Thermaltake. A lot of room inside for water cooling support. They really are pushing the idea of using the distro block and all of their water cooling equipment uh, in, their, in their cases, and they have a lot of radiator support and support for additional fans, and spacing seems really good in these. It's a pretty cavernous interior. RGB software is something that we're all kind of battling with right now, and Thermaltake is kind of at the forefront of that because they have so many components that use addressable RGBs. This is their new Neon Maker software, and it uses a very innovative approach to controlling different components. It uses a timeline, almost like you would see in video editing software. So right here we have all the fans laid out that you see on this wall right over here. Because you can have them mounted in a system in any which way, and you're not always sure which fan is which, when you select one of these fans in the Maker software, it actually lights up red. So it identifies itself, and then you can make any kind of changes that you want with presets, templates, stuff like that. And then once you assign a fan a specific lighting configuration, you place it down on the timeline, and when you play it, it actually goes through and plays it like you would see a timeline in Adobe Premiere or something along those lines. And when it's done, it will loop back on itself. So that you could see over here in the software that it's actually showing you what the fans are doing, and it corresponds, obviously, to what you're seeing on the fans itself. It's actually really innovative. I haven't seen an approach like this before. My biggest concern and something that I expressed to them was system overhead, because when you're running a timeline like this in Adobe Premiere, there is quite a mount uh, quite a hefty amount of CPU utilization going on. Uh, we did check the system monitor and it's not, it's not really terrible, but it is something that they are keeping in mind. Another cool thing that you could do here is when you have these fans configured in your system, you could actually click them and drag them around here so that you say, okay, I have three fans in the front of the case, I have two fans on the top of the case, and then I have one fan in the rear of the case. And then you know that this is how they are set up in your system, and it's easy to identify. And that's why they, they let you actually click and drag these anywhere on here so that you can kind of 
recreate the way your system layout is so that you don't always have to click on this and look for the red fan. You just kind of know based on how it's laid out. It's definitely really innovative. I've never seen anything like this before. It'll be interesting to see how it functions when it comes to market. It should be relatively soon. It's not quite ready for deployment yet. They said they are still testing, adding features and stuff like that. So any lack of polish that you happen to see here will probably be worked out by the time it actually does come for a release. As has been the case in years past, Thermaltake still really heavy into custom water cooling. They are debuting a couple of new colors of their C Pro fittings. So you see these are all color matched to, so that you have 90 degrees and angled fittings to match with your, uh, your standard C-Pro 16 millimeters. They told me not to show you guys this, but check out this green. That didn't quite come out the way they wanted it to. But this will be fixed by the time production comes. These are actually just prototypes right now, so don't worry about the colors. But it actually is really cool that you'll be able to color match your entire system based on the fittings that you're using. Thermal Takes also got some new GPU blocks. And this is very interesting because with the prevalence of things like distro blocks, a lot of times system builders are having the problem where these ports aren't exactly lining up either vertically or horizontally with where they want their tubes to run. So Thermaltake has, has solved that problem by making these rotatable. So these actually rotate full 360 degrees, both of them will rotate, and then it actually allows you to better position your tubes so that you have straighter runs and you don't have to worry about using any kind of fittings to make sure that you're compensating for any offsets. One of the really interesting things that Thermaltake is showing off today is this. These are hydro-dipped PETG tubes, and right now they're only going to be available in their pre-built systems. But if you ever wondered about adding some kind of coloring to your water cooling system without having to worry about either having fully colored tubes or using colored coolants, these are mostly translucent but have a cool color pattern on them. You can get them in this. this is, they call this like oil slick. So this is just a really interesting thing that I haven't seen any other companies do. And they are going to be offering these on pre-built systems just like this one right over here. This is built in their new distro case 350p. Now while this exact layout might not be something that you see, they are working on stuff like this that you will be able to buy on Amazon. The distro case itself is something that's going to be available for $599. It has a full distro block in the back where you can see all of your coolant coming through and you route all your tubing to meet up with all these points along the back. Right now they're using an opaque coolant so it's harder to see the actual connection points. But if we swing back around to the front, we can see that the tubes actually route into the distro block in various places and there's actually a whole bunch of different mounting options for your tubes. The motherboard tray is detachable and swings out so that you can work on your components without you know, interfering with any fans or any other mounting that you might have. And it, it kind of is based off of like the P5, P3 concept, but obviously much, much different and a really cool way that, to build a custom water cooled system with a full distro block in the back. It should also come with a D5 pump, so you don't have to worry about installing the pump in your system or anything like that. It should come ready to go, um, but we don't quite know when this is gonna be available just yet. So that's it from the Thermaltake Suite CES 2020. I want to give a big thank you to our sponsors for this trip. That's Fractal Design, Corsair, and these guys, Thermaltake. Links down below. Get subscribed to the channel if you're not already so you don't miss any of the CES content. We're going to be coming at you with all kinds of videos the entire week, probably all next week too. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time. All of our CES videos are edited on the Electronics Mag 15. Check out the link below.